Cool. Thank you for the invite. So welcome, everybody. So um, what we're going to talk about today is, is a project we've been working on for about eight years now. And it, it's been pretty successful. The, the crews really love it uh, compared to what we were doing before. And it, it's just a way to put our protocols online where they're easily accessible. Um, like I said, we started this in 2012. And prior to that, we had printed paper, uh, protocols just like most people do. The problem we had with that is our medical director is very aggressive and we change protocols on about a monthly basis. Um, pretty much every time we meet with him, he has some type of change or somebody will come up with a, with a question that makes us change protocols. And trying to maintain paper copies on all of the trucks in the county was, was almost a full-time job. So we started looking at, well, you know, what can we do to, to, to make this online? Um, there were some examples as I started looking around. There were um, a couple of different ways of doing it. The most common seemed to be people just scanning in their PDF files of their protocols and posting them on a website. And you know that was nice, but there's a couple of problems with that. The, the, the first thing is, if they're a scanned copy of a protocol, uh, they don't tend to look very good on cell phones. Back 2012, wasn't as big of a deal, didn't have so many smartphones, but you know now we're into the you know into the you know, 2020. Everybody's got smartphones. They want to be able to see it on their smartphone. You know the other issue that comes up with scan protocols is if they're if they're um, not scanned properly, then any kind of screen readers can't handle them. And why is that an issue? Well, any kind of website that's publicly accessible must follow ADA compliance. And these are followed what's called the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines 2.0 is the standard that's used. So even though most of our people, I don't know too many um, people in EMS that are, that are legally blind, it, it would probably cause an issue for them to be legally blind, you still have to follow that guideline. Um, a friend of mine years ago was involved in building a burn building down in Orange County, Florida, and they failed their fire inspection because their fire room didn't have a fire extinguisher in it. And he tried to explain to the inspector that, you know, this room is going to be on fire, a fire extinguisher will, will explode. And they said, well, sorry, there's no exemption. Same thing for, for our websites. Even though, you know, it's our crew is going to be using the website, it's got to follow the ADA compliance. Some people will do just a straight website, um, a straight web page with all the protocols on it. And again, that was nice, but it's actually quite a bit of work. You know, we, we've gotten away from the straight HTML programming. Um, we've gotten into something called content management systems, which we have time we'll talk about talk about later. And we, you know, we're, we're trying to get out of the straight programming. The, the content management systems are nice, but one of the things they don't have is historical tracking, which is something you'll see this one has. So I started looking around more and all that kind of stuff. And then I started thinking about different websites besides protocol websites. I started thinking about wikis. And so what a wiki is, it's a collaborative website that anybody can edit depending on access. We'll talk about that. Um, it was invented by a, guy, by a guy by the name of Ward Cunningham. And it, the name came from, he, he was at Honolulu airport and the, somebody at the airport told him to take the wiki wiki bus. And he thought that's a pretty cool name. So he made that the name of his software. Um, you know, it, it's many different softwares. Of course, the most popular one that most people know about is, is a little website called Wikipedia. And I'm sure that most people heard about that and played on that and everything like that. And it's, it's a great time killer whenever you got nothing else to do, but it's, it's a really good website. Well, the Wikimedia Foundation published software called, called MediaWiki. And this is the software that runs Wikipedia. And what's nice about it is it's downloadable and usable by anybody. It's what's called free and open source. Okay, now what does free and open source mean? It means there's no license fees. It doesn't mean there's not a cost with it. There may still be a cost for, for support if you need any type of support with it. Um, you need somebody that can maintain it. And most importantly, you need to be able to install it at some point. You need to have a server that, can, that you can install it on. Um, there is some debate, you know, people don't understand what open source means and they think it's dangerous and all that kind of stuff. I guarantee you, you use open source software all the time. Um, if you use Firefox as your web browser, if you use Chromium, which you may not have heard of that, but you've heard of what's based on it, the new Microsoft Edge and Chrome are both, both based on Chromium, which is open source. Um, Linux operating system is open source. 
Apache is open source, which is what runs most websites. And then a, a little website that you know, a lot of educators are familiar with called Moodle are all open source software sites that you can download. Again, they are free to download, free to use. So using the software, we're able to put it online where the crews can access it. Um, a couple of nice features of it is you can, you know, go up and down on it. You can do this on your phone. We have columns on here to, uh, to tell when's the last time we, we revised that. We are talking about adding another column for a visited date or review date because state of Florida wants us to review protocols every two years. So we are going to probably add that column in here, but it's real easy to do. You can search on them. And, and by the way, if anybody wants to do this while I'm doing it, you can just, it's roaddoc.com, R-O-A-D-D-O-C.com. And that will take you to the main page of the protocols. You can search. So if I want to look for any protocols that contain morphine in them, just type in morphine and there's all of our protocols that, that address morphine. Everything is linked. So if I go down here to say uh, chest pain protocol, I can scroll down and just like your standard hyperlinks, if I click on the on the morphine link here, it takes me to that protocol page for that for that med. Again, I can link here, there's no link to naloxone. I can go back there, I can see my dosages, I can put everything in one spot. It makes it much easier to, to, to jump place to place. It also makes it easier to update stuff whenever you're, you make a protocol change, you can take and you can um, just check the links and make sure that it's the same all the way through. Um, it is a website. You do have to worry about it going down occasionally. It, it does occasionally go down, but the viewpoint that we look at it, it, it's less likely to go down than it is to have an out-of-date protocol book or lose a protocol book. Um, I know I've been on calls in the past where uh, I need the, to look something up in the protocols, a med that I haven't used in a long while, and I go to grab the book and that page is missing or it's torn out or, or the whole book has been missing occasionally. So yeah, this occasionally has gone down. Um, I had about a month ago, it was down for a day and a half because I ran out of hard drive space on the server. Day and a half, it was back up and, and has been running good since then. Um, you do, like I said, you do have, a, have, have to have a web host to run it on. Um, there's all kinds of them out there. You can Google them and all that kind of stuff. And like on Wikipedia, anybody can log in and edit these articles. So if you want to edit this article on this guy, Sebastian Ogier, then I can create an account, I can log in, and I can make changes to this page. One thing that's missing on here is there is no create account. So you can lock down who can make changes to the protocol. So right now there's only two of us that can make changes to the protocols. Um, I'm the primary person, the other person's there just as a backup in case something happens or I'm out of town or something like that and something big comes up. But the nice thing is, is I've actually, you know, been out of town uh, on a camping trip. Medical director calls me up, says, hey, we found a typo in the protocol. Can we make a change to it? Sure, give me five minutes. I, I log in using my air card and boom, the, the change is made and it's instantly live to the crews. What we do then is anytime we make a change to the protocol, it's just a simple email out to the crews saying, hey, by the way, this protocol has been changed. If it's a more extensive change that we have, then we actually do it as an assignment. We use a program called Target Solutions or a website called Target Solutions to be able to, to track you know, or to, to handle our education. We just create it as an assignment, maybe create a quiz with it or something like that. So make sure they're actually reading, the, reading it. Um, setting this page up or setting this site up is, is very simple. There's plenty of help on it. I know the description, it said about we would be doing that. Um, initially, I had, had set up to or proposed to do this as a uh, like a pre-con at one of the symposiums. Um, we may still do that at some date, but for now, this is more going to be an intro. If, um, if you have interest in learning how to do this, you can get a hold of me and I will guide you the right way. And like I said, at some point, we may try doing it as a, as a pre-con at, at symposium and you can, can totally get a page, at least start in setting up and getting the basics of it down. Initial setup of it is you have to have a, a, a web host. Um, like I said, there's plenty of them out there. They're relatively inexpensive. If you have one, and you can do it at a school, you can do it at an agency, but a lot of times that stuff is controlled by an IT department. 
that can be a little bit difficult to, to, uh, to deal with. Um, this one is actually on a domain I manage. So anytime I need to, I can go in and make, into, make whatever changes to it I need to make. Installing the software is pretty much you copy the files over to, to the web host and you run it, it walks you right through the process and gets you, in, gets you into it. It comes up as a blank page and pretty much you just start typing. Um, some of the stuff you can do on here, like you can see, is I have my general managers. You have, have stuff on the side here that shows you some special, um, some what's called special pages, any kind of recent changes we've made to the protocols or to this page will show on there. It's nothing on this one. One nice thing, like I said, that it does is, let me go down to this one here, is there's a view history. So this shows every change I've made to this page since I first put it up February 2nd of 2012. Um, this is really nice because if we have, you know, hopefully we don't have to deal with this too much and luckily we don't in EMS, but if we have to deal with something of a lawsuit and we didn't know what was the protocol as of this date, all I can do is I can go to this page here, click it up and I can see whatever change, whatever that protocol was that date of it. I can also, if I realize I made a mistake, I can take and I can click here and I can actually revert it back to that, um, to that date if we, if we realize we really made a big mistake. This happens a lot on, uh, on the Wikipedia site because sometimes people will get into a little war where they'll, they'll change a page back and forth. And then one of the admins can lock it down and, and revert the change back to what they say the change should be. Like I said, this isn't so much of an issue here because it's limited to how many people can, can, uh, can edit the page. Hey, Sean, can I stop you real fast? We had a question yep. that does apply to that. Could you just reiterate the, um, what you were saying about how you control who's able to make changes to this page with not being able to create new accounts? Okay, so in the setup of it, you, you actually create an account. So there's a special pages here. And if you notice, there's some, you know, quite a few things in here that anybody can see. So you can see what's the oldest pages, all this kind of stuff. But until I log in, now these highlighted ones are ones that you couldn't see before that. So now, I can add, so if I wanted to add Nate in as a user, I can create an account for him. But until that happens, you, no, nobody can create their own account. Um, they do update the software on a regular basis anytime they find their security issues or whatever. So there are some updates that have to be done, but other than that, it's, it's a pretty secure website. And, and it's, it's also one of those, unless you really publish you're doing this, it's, it's what I call security through obscurity. So nobody can find it if they don't know it's there. Um, we don't really link to this a lot from, from publicly, from, you know, you can't go to the Sanford Fire Department webpage and find this web, find a link here or anything like that. The crews know it's there because everybody in the county knows it's there, but, but that's about it. Um, another nice thing with that too is we can also send links to the hospitals. So all the hospitals can access this. <laughs> we did have a problem with one of the hospitals where their IT, the corporate IT department was blocking the page because there's a biker gang that was roaddocs.com, which is actually a bicycle group of healthcare professionals, but they considered a biker gang. So they were blocking, actually blocking my website. So the hospital couldn't see it. But we've had you know doctors call up and go, hey, I, what's your protocol for this? Here you go, doc, and just send them a link to that page and they can see it. So hopefully that answers the question. If not, let me know and he can um, let me know. So up here in the top, there's now an edit button that wasn't there before. If I log back out, go back to the main page, edit button is gone. Now what's nice though is anybody can view the source. So let me go back to this page again. So this is what the page looks like in the back end. And I'll go through some little brief on that here in a few minutes. But one of the really nice things about this is our medical director is for all of Seminole County and all the cities in Seminole County, but he's also a medical director for another city in another county. Our protocols are very similar, but not exact. So um, 
I talked to the, to the EMS coordinator there and we set it up to where he has his own, what you call it, protocopedia, protocopedia page. He has his own page for his protocols. Anytime we add a new protocol, one of us will, will write it and then I can go in or he can go in copy this source page and paste it onto our website and the page is created. Um, so if we get enough people to do this, you can actually just copy and, and pages back and forth pretty easily between it. And all you have to do is, is upload the files and that kind of stuff. So if I go back to the main page and I log in again, now I have that edit button up here. Um, if I go down here and I go back to the chest pain page, now if I wanted to, I can actually make edits to this page. If I click on edit up here, that's the what the back end of it looks like. It looks weird at first to get used to it. It's actually pretty easy. Anytime you see the little asterisk symbol here, that's the, the, uh, the dot. The bullet there. If I made this a pound symbol, it would actually number these sections. So let me just do it really quick as a, as a preview. I want to actually save the page. But if I go here and I make this all pound, and if I make this one pound pound, now it numbers it and does insets. Go back, change it back to an asterisk. If I put like two asterisks there, same thing. Now it makes it a, a subset of that of that first one there. If I have our farm medical director sends me the protocol as a Word document, um, as long as it's basic text and no uh, graphics or anything, I can have the page up in probably less than five minutes. It's just a matter of going through and replacing whatever formatting he did with the formatting for uh, Wikipedia or for, sorry, for media wiki. If I wanna have the hyperlinks, so we have the, the, all the links here for the treatment section. All those look like is, let me scroll down, find one, is that's what a hyperlink would look like. That's the name of the page. And then this is the text that will show up on, up here, did I get that? Oh, sorry, I get that backwards. So we try to put all the letter, all the drugs as, uh, capital text to make it easier to spot. And then it would actually go to the morphine sulfate page when they click on that link. For graphics, it's just a link to the graphic. This graphic, you click on it, it's unreadable. We realize that, I've redone it, I just haven't posted it yet. Um, one of our hospitals was doing a chest pain accreditation and said, oh, we can't even read this thing. And then I realized they were right. And I realized this is from somebody that had, that, uh, when we had first done the protocols and it, it didn't format right when we did it. So I have to redo that graphic. Uh, but pretty much just it's a link there. So that's gonna tell it to load that, that graphic and I would just upload that graphic to the website. Tables are doable. They are a little bit of, of a um, little more involved. Uh, probably the most involved page I have for that is our trauma transport protocols, which is a, which is a standard Florida thing. So you have all the blues and the reds and all that here. And what that looks like is this gibberish here. So yeah, there's a little bit of a gibberish. This one took me probably the longest to do was to get this set up. But again, there's so much help on the media wiki website. You just go to that and, and you type in you know, colors And it's going to have have help on there on how to change and how to set up all your all your stuff. So the media wiki group is just full of information on how to uh, how to create these pages and everything like that. So there's color usage, there's guidelines on color, some of the common colors, the codes, and all that kind of stuff and everything. And we have common colors there, so blue, red, stuff like that, because those are the, the, and we had to use blue and red. I didn't like using those because those are also internet colors. You know, that's a, a unvisited link versus a visited link. 
um, but that's the colors are specified in state in state rules, so I had to keep them with that. So that's the table. Again, a little bit of a pain to set up, but actually once you get it in and all that, it's not that bad to edit it. Um, creating a page. So if I wanted to add a new page, I just go back here to the main page. I click on edit. I get on, this is what a basic table looks like. And I just come down here and say, I want to do another line. Easiest way to do it is just copy the one before it. Let's name that one demo and save changes. And now if I go here, oh, did that because I already had a page listed as that. Sorry, let me redo this. That's why it didn't show up as, as red. So it shows up as red, meaning a page that or a page that doesn't exist. And you can see right there on, on the, the tooltip, page does not exist. Click on demo one. And now I can go in here and I can start typing whatever I need to type, um, whatever page I need to do. Again, the easiest way to do this is copy from Word document, paste it in here, and go through and do all the formatting and all that kind of stuff. Let me go back out, take that one back out so the crews don't look at that and go, what the heck is this? One of the other things we, we have on the end, we, some of the changes we've recently made on it, the medication guidelines, we had them all by category, but we found out that people, it's hard to remember all the categories for all the meds in the heat of the moment. So we made it as individual pages, a little bit easier to update also. Um, procedure guidelines. Um, I did have an issue where, uh, one was it? Where one of the um, vendors, um, it was the, it was uh, blood tubes, you know, blood draw. Because Vacutainer is a registered trademark, I actually got an email from Becton, Dixon and Company saying, hey, anytime you have this name on the website, you must put that it's a registered trademark. Went in there, added the page, boom, they're happy. Um, so just think about that, 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 that they do have people that scan these websites. They have bots that go and scan all the websites looking for their name just to make sure that it, that it meets all their guidelines and all that kind of stuff. But they didn't tell me, hey, you can't use it or anything like that. I just had to put the little trademark symbol at the end of it. The other thing we have done is we've added any medical director memos. So a you know, medical director puts, it, puts a new memo out we take and, and we throw it up there that way it's accessible to everybody we added some covid stuff on here as you know towards the beginning we haven't really been doing this because we've been doing a lot of face-to-face -face or a lot of zoom meetings with and all that kind of stuff and then we also added our pro our paramedic clinical assessment program so our precepting process is up here that way everybody can see it it's it's out in the open for everybody to see so pretty much anything that that we want the crews to be able to see is going to be going on this website um, Nate, is there any question that came up off here? Because I was going to switch to the other site if, if nothing's up on this one. Um, so the, the question, uh, we kind of got a little bit more clarification from what I had asked before. It was actually asking not how to control who's able to make changes, but can anyone, once they figure out, you know, that roaddoc.com contains your protocols, can they just view this or do you have to sign in and identify yourselves as one of your paramedics to be able to go in and see any of this information? Um, anybody can view it, but um, we're in Florida. Florida is the most open record state in the nation, most public records. So this is all public record anyways. Anybody can, can request a copy of the protocols and we have to give it to them. So why, you know, we're not gonna try to hide it or try to put it behind a wall. You, there are ways you can make it where it, you have to log in to view it. Um, the other question, I, other issue I would have with that is, you know, if I got a medic that needs to look something up, you know, last second or, or you know, stuff's really happening, they need to look it up quickly. 
I don't want them fumbling with having to log into a website to be able to do that. So they can just, all the crews have this hot linked in their phone, all of our um, report computers have it linked on the, on the desktop and all that, so they can just quickly go to it. Awesome, so I think that, that addresses that question. Um, that's the only okay. one we have so far, so I think you're good to move on. Okay, so the other website that I was gonna show and, and this sort of a, a bonus one is a website called, well, it's the, the back end is called Joomla. And so Joomla is, is what's called content management system. Um, we've gotten away from the days of uh, typing pure HTML. Um, if, if you know the, 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 the way I had to code the Wikipedia pages or the, the, the protocolpedia pages is sort of like HTML, but not as, as finicky. Um, HTML can be very finicky and, and it's, it's you really got to have a lot of training in order to write pages. So they started coming out with co what's called content management systems. And what this is, is, is a website you can install, pretty much same requirements as for installing the, the media wiki. It's a website you can install and then you can put a lot of stuff on it. We use it for a couple different things, but the thing that, that I think is really nice for that um, for both the, the pre-hospital side and the school side is for tracking of clinicals and, and scheduling of stuff. Um, there's a, a add-ons that you can get for it. The one I'm using is what's called event booking. It's the only thing that I'm talking about that costs any money and it's a whopping $40 a year. Whereas some of these websites are a monthly subscription per person and you, know, you could be talking hundreds of thousands of dollars. This one's a whopping $40 per year. Um, it's one uh, RIT department, you know, because they have to approve all purchases. They questioned me on it the first time. And when I showed them what it did and all that, they don't even bother anymore whenever I renew it. But what it lets us do is, and if you want, you can get the same thing. You can, go to the, you can go to the site and look at this. If you go to the roaddoc.com slash demo, you'll come up with this page. And I just threw this up as a little quick little demo site. It took me probably an hour to get this up and, and just a few things loaded in it. But this is a way, you know, say I have set up here where, where students can sign up for clinicals. So they can log in here. They, they would have a login. Right now I have this publicly available, but for, you know, for a, a uh, clinical website, you would be doing it through, through logins and you would set up their logins. But whenever, if I want to sign up for hospital A, labor and delivery, I just click on register, put in my name. And now I'm now registered for that site. Um, it's a lot easier than some of the ones I've seen out there that seem to be a lot more uh, harder flow and all that kind of stuff and everything. The guy that that, that handles this this Zoom or this event booking, this guy is, is Zoom Donation. I swear I don't think the guy ever sleeps because I've posted questions to him and I've seen other people post questions to him all hours of the day. And he always replies in about 15 or 20 minutes. He's very aggressive on stuff. Um, and he will make changes based on questions I've asked him. He's made changes to, to his actual code and then make it easier for us to use. On the back end, what it looks like, I'll probably have to log back in. So here's a list of the registrants. So you can have a list of everybody that's on here. I can narrow it down. If I only want to see people that are signed up for ER at Hospital A, you could do it there. You can have it by date. You can say how many people. So if you saw on the thing here that I could have two people sign up for this site and one is registered. If that person calls up and they need to cancel, all I do is I log into the back site and I cancel it. Now, if I go back here, now that one that one has changed to a zero and now I have two available places on it. The one thing that where I started using this website for and the, the main reason I started using it is for hiring process. So we've had hiring processes with we've had 120 people apply and we do a written test and then we do an interview and I really don't want to call 120 people and schedule those. So I put it on them. Once I approve their application and everything's good, I create them an account. They all get an email with a link to the website. They log in, they schedule their own 
interview slot, they schedule their own written test slot. You can set it to where, even though I send the emails out today, the site doesn't open until noon on Friday. That's the first time they can they can log in. It's pretty neat to watch because I will sit there and, and when, when, you know, when I know it's, it's getting time for them to sign in, I'll keep refreshing the page. And at one minute after, I already have 30, 40 people sign up for an interview or sign up for a written test. They can change it. They can delete their own. Once you have them as a registered user, you can, they can delete their own times. You can, you can set that also. So for each event, I can actually put a location in of it. I can put the, you know, the address of the hospital or whatever, and then they can see it. So if I go here and I want to see about Medic 1, I can click on the location and there's a map of where it is. So they can see, they can see the location. You can put in um, information about it. So for L&D, you know, here's some notes up here. Report to the L&D charge nurse 15 minutes prior. You must have your school photo ID with you at all times. So you can add the notes in for all that, all that stuff. You can put in your start date and end date and your times. You put in here, when can they start registering for that? And when can they no longer register? So if you're going to let them register 30 days out, up till seven days out, you would put those dates in there. Over here, you can put in that they can they can cancel themselves if you click make this yes, but they've got to cancel prior to seven days out so somebody else can sign up for that slot. So it's not like you know they go out partying the night before and wake up that morning and decide, hey, I'm not going to go to clinical, and they cancel the site and say, well, I, I shouldn't get penalized for that. I canceled. Um, it, it keeps them from doing that last minute. You can add descriptions in, you can add pictures. There's a lot you can do with this. I probably only use maybe 10% of, of the, the features of this software. It's, it's a pretty useful software. The, um, you can import, so I don't have to sit there and enter each one of these individually. It is a pretty good import feature. The only thing it's a pain is dates are a pain in the butt. Just dates in general and computers are a pain in the butt because of the way they're stored dates and times. Um, but this, the only real hiccup, what I've, I've found the best way to handle that is I will take and I will um, enter a couple manually, export them so I can see the format, go in, add in my whole list of whatever I need, and then re-import them in, and they're all there. They all show up. Same thing, I can import all the attendees or all the, uh, the people that are applying for jobs. So I have 100 names. All I need is, is you know, name, um, phone number and email address. I import it and they automatically get emails along with their password and everything sent out. So there's not a lot of, lot of work on my end. It is much easier than calling these people individually and dealing with changes and you know, voicemails and, and phone tag and all that kind of stuff and everything like that. So it, it, like I said, it's a really, really good website for, for handling all that kind of stuff. Um, you can also set it to where like I said, you can make it where they have to log in and there's different menus you can do. So now there's a list of attendees that shows up. So you would have this maybe for um, your clinical staff so they can log in and they don't have to go into the back end side of things from the website itself or from the front end. They can see, hey, these are the people that are signed in to, to be at clinical today. So I need to, you know, I can do an attendee. There's actually a way to do this if you want to do this for like a, like a class that you can, they can check in. They can um, print out a PDF ticket, essentially. You scan it with your phone and it checks them in when they walk in the room. So like I said, it's got a lot of features and I, I probably only use 10%, but, but even that 10% has made my job so much easier for, for handling the, the hiring process. Um, I don't know how we did it before when, when we had, you know, we had one, ap one application, we had 400 people apply at one time and, and it was a pain in the butt. It took multiple of us to get a hold of everybody and put out about the test and everything like that. So th this makes it so much easier. Like I said, there is a small fee for that one. It, it's 40 bucks from this guy. It's annually. He does have a couple other things that are pretty neat. He's got like a, a document tracker. Um, he's got like membership software and all that kind of stuff. I've, I've used a few of his programs. He's, like I said, he's pretty, pretty good about how he does stuff and all that kind of stuff. So um, the Joomla itself is totally free. Uh, you just have to have a website to put it on. Um, you've probably put on, 
been on plenty of websites that have used Joomla and not even realized it. it it's a very popular, it's probably the most popular um, content management system out there. Um, a lot of people are using it. it. It's free. The only one that has the fee is that is that events booking. At the end of the year, if you don't renew it, you can still use it. You just don't get the updates. So if you decide, eh, I don't know if I need any of the changes or whatever, but it's worth paying the 40 bucks a year just to for, for the work, amount of work he put into it and all that kind of stuff and everything. So, so that's pretty much all I have on both of those. Nate, any questions come up from that one? Uh, we have uh, a couple of general questions just okay. uh, um, about both of these. But so for the first, I mean, both both softwares, I guess. Did you find when you started using these things and implementing them, did, uh, did people have like a large learning curve? Were there issues and resistance to these types of things as you were implementing them? Or did everyone seem to get it? It was very intuitive. I was surprised they they loved it. And and I think a lot of it is it's the same, you know, for the protocol webpage, it's the same software they've already been using on Wikipedia. Um, every one of them had been in school, so they're used to using Wikipedia to help do reports and all that kind of stuff and everything. So it it was, you know, it, it's one of those I didn't even, you know, say, hey, I want to do this, or whatever. I just set up about half the protocols on here. It took me probably two or three days to do it, and then showed it to the medical director and he was just amazed about it. Um, he, he loved it and, and he's shown it to a bunch of people and all that kind of stuff and everything. Um, one of the things that I wish it had a feature of, there's a link here, it doesn't work very well, but is um, people have asked, well, can I print out the protocol page or print out the protocol pages? We're actually discouraging that from the crews because like I said, our protocols change on a monthly basis and trying to keep them updated is very tough. Um, so yeah, the learning curve on this is, is much you know, hardly anything to it even even the the set the setting up of it what i found is if i as i i keep a, a a document to the side of templates and when i'm adding a, a new type of page i copy the template over and then just fill it in from there for the uh the this site it's pretty much self-explanatory if they can get logged into a site then they um they can do it. Um, it is nice. We did have a guy in the last process that said um, that he couldn't, he could never get logged into the website or sorry, he never got an email from me to get logged into the website. His dad wanted to know, you know, so you always know that's a problem there when the, when the parents call you, but his dad wanted to know why his son didn't get hired and how the son never got an email. And I could actually see in the logs where he tried to log into the website and he had issues and he emailed me. And I emailed him back and he still never logged into the website to, to sign up for it. Um, but I haven't had anybody complain that it's been di too difficult to use or anything like that. So does that answer the question? Yeah, absolutely. And um, I do want to just say before we, uh, before I ask this last question, if anyone has any, if you want to share any of your experiences, what you guys are doing, if you have any, um, any tips or tricks that you guys have been implementing, yes, um, I'd be happy to, to go ahead and share those on the stream. Uh, our last question so far is, um, if you are relying on this as your, your primary software or the way that you're um, maintaining these protocols, do you have a, like a contingency plan or so do you still use other types of backups just in case this site does go down or you need to access it and somehow you can't? There is a, um, well, it depends on how much money you want to spend. So you can, um, if, if you're doing this through your agency, then you can have them replicate the site and do all kinds of stuff and all that. This website actually is actually my own domain because I've got some other personal stuff on other subdomains on it. So I have no problem paying for it because I'm just, this is sort of a side thing I use it for. Um, so yeah, it, it occasionally goes down, but I think it, it's rare that it happens, and I think it's less likely to go down than have a bad copy of a protocol book out there or a lost copy of a protocol book on a truck. So, yeah, it's, it's stuff we've talked about. Um, there's not a good way to print from these, and when I have printed, it's been about 400 pages. So I don't want to carry that protocol book around with me. Fair enough. I completely understand. So uh, that does cover all of our questions and comments that we've received so far. If there's anyone on here that's, uh, you know, holding anything back, please go ahead and share it with us. We have a few more minutes if you want to um, address anything. But uh, do you have anything else that you want to talk about or um, address while we're while we're here? Now, there is um, somebody was trying because there's again, there's all kinds of add ons you can do for this. 
somebody was trying to work on a way to download the entire web page. They're, they're working on it. They haven't gotten there yet. But somebody asked, one of the helicopter agencies asked me about it, if there was a way to download this because they don't necessarily have internet access when they're flying on the helicopter. Um, so that is something that maybe comes down the line a little bit that would help with that. Again, the, the issue with that is making sure you're, the copy's staying up to date. 